Salvete de Scipuli, this is help for your Latin studies, Henley First Year Latin, exercise number 176. And this exercise is part of lesson 14, where we've been working to master the present imperfect and future forms of the being verb, sum esse fui futurus. I am to be, I was about to be. Um, and of course, in the present tense, we would say, I am, you are, he, she, it is, and so forth. In the imperfect, it's past, so I was, you were, and in the future, I shall be, you will be, etc. And so in exercise 176, we'll be translating some sentences from Latin to English, and you can count on finding some of those various forms of, um, of that being verb in those sentences there. So let's take a look at number one. Number one says, Propter metum hostium in castris caesaris sumus. And the first thing that I notice is sumus. That's our verb and it means we are. It's a plural first person. We are, it's present tense. Um, so I'm keeping that in mind. That sort of gives me an idea of the tone of the sentence or, you know, the direction that this sentence is taking. It's talking about a group of people in the present tense. Um, and I also recognize propter as being a preposition which takes the accusative. Um, it means on account of. And then I see this word metum. Uh, which means fear, and that um ending would make it accusative, so that pairs nicely with a preposition there. Um, I also see hostium, which I recognize from our vocabulary, meaning enemy, and that I-U-M ending makes it a plural genitive. Um, so that word enemy is interesting because um, we could translate it in English just in its singular form, enemy, and it would it could mean a group. Um, that are the enemy and so you would see you would find that in its plural form in Latin for sure and then we have in castris caesaris uh, we know in means in and castris is a word meaning camp um, let's see that's that takes the in takes the ablative so that ending on castris is an ablative ending singular and then Caesaris um, is from our third declension family, a vocabulary word, Caesar, Caesaris. So that ending is a genitive singular. So it's showing possession. It's Caesar's camp or the camp of Caesar. Um, and we can translate this. The answer key will show you one thing. It could be translated slightly different word order in English. Um, if it makes sense in, and, uh, in the translation, is the same as what you would is basically the same as what you would find in the answer key then good job so let's go ahead and try this um i'm gonna i'm gonna open up with this prepositional phrase propter metum hostium so we know propter means on account of or loosely translated because of right because um on account of what Okay, our, our accusative noun that's paired with the preposition is metum, fear. So on account of, I'm going to put in an article here. We know that there's no translation in Latin for articles, but um, in English that would help the sentence along. So on account of the fear, and then we have this hostium, which I mentioned is a genitive plural ending, and it, the, the stem, the root word there means enemy. Um, we would translate of the enemy okay or enemies i suppose um but again that word enemy in its singular form can be referring to a group which would be which would make it plural in latin uh so let's go on i don't see a subject none of these nouns are in their not in are in a nominative form and so i'm going to assume that our subject is a pronoun which is captured in the verb so on account of the fear of the enemy what we are that's the subject and verb and they're in agreement um, obviously as they're coming from one word we are what we are in castris caesaris we are in the camp of caesar 
or we are in Caesar's camp. Either way, in English, it makes the same sense, right? So we are in the camp of Caesar. And that's number one. Let's go ahead and do one more together. Two, which says, undike erat clamor hostium. Oh, look, it's the same word. So we already know that that means of the enemy, right? It's in the genitive plural. Um, the other interesting thing to note here in number two is that uh, the verb is not at the end. Often in Latin, you'll find the verb at the end, but there's some of these forms of the being verbs that will come earlier in the sentence. And when they do, that often indicates that we're, we're going to be translating there is, there was, there were, depending on if it's, you know, plural or what its tense is. Um, and in this case, erat, if I check on my grammar page, I'm on page 76, looking at grammar rules 346, 347, 348 for the present, imperfect, and future. And that erat is here. It's an imperfect form, so we're thinking past tense. It's singular, and it's third person, he, she, it was. Um, or we could say, in this case, with it coming so early on in the sentence, there was. Um, that might be how we'll open up this sentence. That may be our subject and verb right there. So, undike, I'm just going to flip back a page because it's brand new to our vocabulary. Undike is an adverb, meaning from all sides or on all sides. So I'm gonna start here. Again, it may deviate from the answer key. That's okay, as long as what's translated to English makes sense and in and, and meaning it matches what's there. So erat, there was, there was what? Clamor, hostium. Clamor is a vocabulary word meaning shouting, and we already said that hostium means of the enemy. So there was shouting of the enemy, undike, on all sides, or from all sides. There was shouting of the enemy from all sides. Okay, I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a great week.